three. You guys show up day after day. You guys grind. I'm going to tell you that right now. I got, I got, you guys don't skip days. The pros, pros, D-Lad. Show up. Yeah, that's, that's half the battle. So you talked to them for a bit there at mm -hmm. the end. Uh, was that you not being happy? Was that end Yeah, I, you know, it's, I got bitten along, like every year I've been around the NFL, the first day you introduce cards, show teams is usually a cluster. And so that's not what I wanted because I think it's human nature to let your guard down. We're not trying to do anything stupid. We're not going in here all out full uh, speed scrimmage, but we, we expect speed and we expect the guys on the other side of it, reading the cards to be professional and to get lined up. It's a great experience for everything. To me, it's how you develop guys. Uh, it's not just to sit there and feel good and be a highway cone so we can get you know 12 for 12 and feel good and then have an unrealistic picture on Sunday. That's just a personal philosophy. Uh, I did that job for a lot of years. Ironically, John Gannon and I, probably two best years with he and I doing it, who we'll see uh, the Philly D coordinator. So it's just the expectation, and that's part of it. I, I wasn't very happy with it, um, but it picked up at the end, and I just let them know. I mean, that's my, that's my job, to, to, get, to get the thing rolling the way that we uh, believe in, the way we see fit. Frustrating for you guys, literally the last practice. That you'll have, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, no, it, it, I, I'm, I'm more – no, I don't look at it like that. I look at it. That's why we, we put the schedule we did this week, because you'd rather go through that today than you are in week one. And that's not to take anything away. It's a big game for a lot of guys Sunday night. And that's not to devalue the game in any way, shape, or form. But we're fortunate that it's preseason and it's part of the continuing education. And we, we got to do a better job. Like, I'm not down. It's not going to ruin my Friday. It's just knowing what the expectation is. And these guys have responded. And I expect it to be better next time we have a Friday practice. I realize maybe this might, I don't think this will get clouded, but have you made decisions yet? Uh, yeah, we're pretty sure. I mean, the majority of these guys will play. Um, again, we'll, we'll finalize that tomorrow in the staff meeting if there's anybody that may not. And, and, uh, but I would expect the majority of the guys to play Sunday night. Uh, yeah, Coach, what are you going to see in this game? Are you, are you going to have uh, you, know, you know most of your starters playing, it looks like? Well, everybody's at different points. Um, you know, the way we've gone about this preseason, it's been about developing and evaluating the young guys. At the same time, we feel good about the vets that we know are going to be out there and the, the progress they've made. You know, we're in a new territory. You know, everybody's trying to figure out how you want to handle only three preseason games. But the reality is we've got to play 17 regular season games. So it's all, that's the fun part. That's a fun challenge. So the way we look at it is we wanted these guys to get through a week to find a routine. So when we get into the, to game week, Philadelphia, it's not the first time they've gone through the schedule, how we'll do things in preparation. But it's still a big game. I mean, we got we got big decisions we got to make uh, by Tuesday afternoon. And so, you know, like I said, most of these guys will play. Uh, you know, some of the guys that we expect to start, they may play, but how long will just kind of determine how the game's going and, and really what the uh, plan is. I'm not going to give it away now, what the plan that we've got with the coordinators. So I know that's a long-winded, vague answer, but that's where we're at. Yeah, I know uh, a couple uh, different ways to do it, get a couple series out of them or go to halftime and let them come back so they can get used to that routine. Sure. Are y'all kind of trying to decide uh, which is the best approach for you all? Yeah, it, it's, you know, the guys that, there's some guys that need snaps, so it's not the, the first snap, you know, and, and we too, I mean, excuse me, in two weeks for week one against Philly. Um, and everybody's at different parts of their career, D-Led. You know, some of these young guys do need to play. How long kind of be determined how they're playing and what we're going to get accomplished. Like I said, we're not going to have some elaborate scheme. We're not going to sit there and uh, try in a preseason game, try to trick Kevin Stefanski and his staff so we can feel good about an Instagram highlight. What we're trying to do is make sure we got guys that can get in and out of the huddle, that can block, that can tackle in space, that can get open and catch the football, and, 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 a, and a quarterback that can drop back and deliver the football. So uh, it's pretty much what we're looking to get out of Sunday night. How's he uh, uh, coming with his package for, for Sunday? Josh done a nice job. You know, he's in a unique situation. It's a life of, of guys in that spot that get signed and at that position. And um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a smart guy. He's, again, he's prepared all week. And we'll see him at some point Sunday night. I think you said on Monday that you felt good about, like, a third of the roster, like, decisions. Is it still around that? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like, like, you know, some of these is like, who are you kidding? Like, right, we, we know Jake's going to be our left tackle, and he's had a good camp, and he's earned it. So there is some of that. If, if you know, you're, 
You're paying a left tackle a lot of money, and then you know he's at a bad camp, and we got big problems. And we feel good about Jake. We feel good about Matt Ryan. And we feel good about Grady Jarrett. So like those are the you know it's like Captain Obvious. Like sit here and play games, but those guys will start against Philadelphia. This shouldn't be earth shattering news. Now the mix of guys too, you know who we're going to play at left guard, who's going to be the right tackle. We have a pretty good idea right now, but let it play out really over this uh, Sunday night and next week as well. And there's some of our packages on defense. I guess at practice today, there were so many different combinations that y'all were looking at. Can you kind of just walk me yeah, through Yeah, I mean, some of it's just practicality, getting guys, because that's the fine line, right? We don't want to keep them out here forever on Friday. We feel pretty good about our preparation, what we got to walk through, and it's a fine line. If it's a normal week, um, you know, you know who's going to be, for the most part, who's going to be in there. Now you're kind of, you got a couple things going on. We're trying to make sure the vets are getting ready. Yes, some may play more than others, but we're really ultimately getting them ready for September 12th. And we got the young guys, we got to prepare to play Sunday night and to make sure that they're in the rhythm of what an NFL week would feel like. Get to the stadium, they feel good about the calls they've used all week because that's reality. So there's kind of, you know, mixing and matching. And then you get in here and you combine a, a card appearance in the scout team and then. We're subbing guys. So, yeah, this is one of the harder – I would say harder. I don't like that language. It's uh, one of the more complex practices of the year we'll have in that way. This is going back mm -hmm. to really January, but when you called Dean, did you expect him to say yes? Yes. You did? What, <laughs> what was it that told you, hey, I, I think – Just because I'd had a couple back. conversations with him, and then uh, my joke, I don't know what the cutoff is. I have to go back and look at – I think Jimmy Johnson's one of the only guys that's had really stayed retired. Uh, I don't know what the cutoff is. Uh, I'm not going to give predictions on myself, but I, I, I don't know. Let's, let's call it 58 years old. The guys I know that coach past 58, when they were retired, they're really, really retired. So I don't know. Maybe I need to do some research. Uh, he seems to be the only guy that's ever stayed retired. And I think of Joe Gibbs. Um, I think of multiple coaches. I mean, Dean, uh, you know, I don't think Dick LeBeau really ever wanted to retire. Tom Moore hasn't retired. Uh, but that's the running joke. Like, the guys coaching their 60s, they probably never truly retire. You'd probably convince them to come out. And when you decided that you wanted to go to the team, was that, how, how much of that was he's been around for so long, he can be a sounding board for you versus just really a good defensive coordinator? Versus yeah, uh, there's a lot of factors. One is knowing, all right, what, what are my, you know, this is year one for me as a head coach and still going to call the plays um, and hiring the a good staff and the, and the right guys is everything. And so obviously I had worked with Dean, trust Dean, knew he was somebody that I can bounce ideas off of and understand that he can handle the defensive coordinator role. Um, and where my inexperience, right, this is the year one for me, is, and he's been coaching 48 years, so, and the person he is. And, uh, you know, the whole staff, they're all big hires, but that, that was a critical hire coming out of the gate for me. Um, okay. Go ahead. I was asking him about, like, I don't know, when he was doing film study and everything, when he got the job, and he said that the Kansas City game, he was like, that was the expectation for this defense. And yeah. He was like, that's what I look at as the expectation and how I know these guys can play. Sure. Did you have a similar game when you were going back? Like, I was trying to figure out if there was an equivalent for you, maybe, with the offensive side of things that not, you look at? Not really. It was really um, looking at the, the whole – season. I mean, you, you can see, I mean, there was a lot of yards gained, but ultimately, uh, you know, you're judged by wins and losses. So it was more kind of diving in why I thought maybe things happen. Okay, personnel, like who can we realistically come back? And a lot of those are financial decisions. Other of them are just schematic decisions. Um, so I tried to keep an open mind about that. And then just knowing that there's some familiarity because we played uh, this team in when I was in Tennessee and we played Atlanta in 2019. So I went back to some of that just to confirm or sometimes, you know, it's funny how your memories work. You can misremember things and you need to go back to actually fact check yourself. So there was some of that too. Uh, what do you want to see from the defense uh, when the starters are out there against the Browns on Sunday night? Well, again, we'll, we'll decide, um, will it be the, the true, you know, the starting 11 will be a Philly, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll make determination. But again, we think the majority of the guys will play, but it's more getting up, getting the call in, playing good fundamentals defense, make sure we're in the right call. And obviously we want to see guys tackle. I mean, that's usually the issue early in the season. You know, it's not the old days. And, you know, and I know everybody used to tackle a lot more in practice. And we don't want to be the team that's 
it's missing a lot of open field tackles early in the, in the season. All right. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you for coming out.